My name is Kim Kepers. I work as an associate professor at Maastricht University, where we study the effects of uh, classical psychedelics, but also MDMA, uh, on the behavior and emotions of healthy volunteers, but also uh, of patients. Next to that, we also do survey studies and naturalistic studies. I plan to talk about microdosing, but I also heard that there will be uh, several talks on microdosing, but then I did choose to stick with the topic because uh, you know, we are one of the few labs that are doing these placebo controlled studies with microdoses of psychedelics. The biggest challenge is uh, first having the money and then also finding the substances to be able to conduct the research with and then go through the hassle of the ethics approval. It is a very young field, microdosing, and there are a lot of questions that need to be answered. I still do think that we need to find out which dose is the most uh, effective, which schedule, dosing schedule is the most effective, whether we should give the substance alone or also combine it with um, coaching, because I also see this changing in, in the field. And then I think amongst uh, the users too, that uh, coaching next to microdosing becomes an important thing. Then it will be something uh, similar, I think, to the full hallucinogenic doses, where it's also not only the substance that has the effect, but it's the full package where you have the substance together with the coaching. To understand whether different psychedelics have different effects, how long the effects uh, last, I don't know whether you can say that you have the believers and the non-believers. That's not very scientific. What I do find uh, convincing is that when you look at the data, you also see behavioral data showing changes after a microdose. We have shown, for example, that it enhances a marker of neuroplasticity, and I find this very convincing. You also have uh, other studies showing changes in uh, connectivity patterns when they do imaging or uh, changes in uh, oscillations, when they do uh, EEG research. So I would not immediately say that there is nothing, but we should be very careful about the methodology and understand what is happening.